Hi, everybody, and welcome aboard to Local Matters, where living local never felt so good. You know, Alabama ranks number eight in the nation. That's right, we're not at the bottom this time, but number eight in the nation, and that number is concentrated in growth. We're talking about the growth of women-owned businesses. You see, according to the fourth annual American Express Open State of the Women-Owned Businesses Report, the number of women-owned businesses in Alabama has grown some 76% since 1997. The report clearly shows that women are choosing the path of entrepreneurship at record rates. The entrepreneurial road, we know it's hard and it's full of uncertainties, but women in, are in the game now more than ever before. And when we come back, we will meet a few local women who decided to walk down that dark entrepreneurial lane. You know why? Because if it's local, it matters. Yes. Hey everybody, welcome back to Local Matters. You know, according to the American Express Open State of the Women-Owned Business Report, women are choosing the path of entrepreneurship at record rates. Joining me today are several local women who help to make up uh, part of that equation. So welcome aboard, guys. Welcome Miss Candy Bernhardt Bothwell, also Miss Rebecca Stubblefield. Welcome aboard, guys. Yeah, you didn't have to come too far. So welcome to coming on down to Oxford and TV24. Thanks. Candy, I've known you for a long time, and you are here in the set. I cannot believe it. I just want you guys, this dress, I'm really dressed up today, and I want to thank you for it. This is compliments of Miss Candy Bothwell, um, and also J. Ma B. All right. So, Candy, um, you have not always been in the business uh, of, of doing things like this. Tell me your story. How did you find yourself working for yourself? Okay, well, first of all, I'm a native of Anniston, okay. and I've been here all my life. Yeah. Um, I finished at Anniston High School. Mm -hmm. um, what year I did you finish? 89. So you got a shout out, 89. Class of 89 <laughs> in the house. In the house. Yeah. So um, I started my business maybe about four months ago. Okay. But it was nothing that I thought that I would be doing. Right. It was like I had dreamed of always being my owning my own business. But, right. you know, it never falls in your place. It, right. You know, it's never in your timing. Right. Um, and in order to have a test, you have to have a testimony. That's true. That's um, true. I've been working for a place for 16 years. Okay. And um, my testimony is that you can lose a job same day you can get a job. Mm -hmm. You can lose a job never knowing that you're going to lose a job that day. That's right. And after 16 years, I lost my job. Okay. And I lost my job in February. Um, and this is February of, of 2017. 2007. So just a few months just ago. Just a few months ago. Okay. Um, March of 2017, I rolled by down Noble Street, and it was a building vacant. Mm -hmm. So I said I, I did a phone call. Okay. Missed the phone call the first time, and it mm -hmm. was like somebody was talking to me saying, "You need to call that number back." Call it back. I called it back and I talked to someone, and they said, "Go in right now. You know, we'll let you in." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I went in and. Um, Saw the building and I was like, okay, God, is this for me? Because, you know, when things move that quick, you're like, okay, what's going on? What right, is going to happen? Yeah, right, right. You know, and it was like, I could hear a voice say, it's for you. It's this for is for you. you. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I told the man, I said, I'll be back tomorrow. Okay. I got the building on March the 14th. I opened my business on April the 7th. I did my ribbon cutting on 1931 Noble Street. Wow, congratulations for you. So let me go back. So you mentioned that you, after 16 years being on the job, and I know you, and I know that you were hardworking, but after 16 years of being on that job, you were no longer, your services were no longer needed on the job. Now, then just a few minutes, a few months later, then you found yourself uh, operating your own business. How had you prepared for this? Were you, because you mentioned you, had you not got fired, you would still be probably there at your job. Mm -hmm. So were you preparing for this at all, for this to happen? I really wasn't preparing for it. I was just always praying. Like a couple of years I had started praying, I want to be my own business owner. Never knew how it was going to happen, when it was going to happen. Um, but one thing I can tell you that prayer really changes things. Okay. Um, and so it was like, okay, since I lost my job, what is I going to do next? 
Well, here's the thing I'm trying to get to. How do you go, because you've got to have special talents and abilities, and you are now working in the fashion apparel industry, providing women uh, with beautiful clothing, such as the one that I have on today, but uh, clothing, and, and you, uh, what I understand, you also are in alterations as well. So how did you find yourself? It's not like you just wake up and say, there's a building, I'm going to move in and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and open up a clothing business. How did you, were you working in that? at all? Well, about a year ago, actually about a year last week, I started sewing. Okay. Um, I went to my sister-in-law's house one day and she said, I made something, made a skirt, and my brother had bought her a sewing machine. So I'm like, okay, I know. If my sister-in-law can do this, I can do this. Right. So I went and bought me a sewing machine. She showed me how to make my first skirt. And I started making skirts and tops. And I'm like, okay. So it was like, a, I mean, I was advertising, putting it on Facebook. I started making skirts for a lot of different people. So as I did that, um, doing, when I was working, on Saturdays, I would go to Birmingham to my girlfriend's shop, and I would work on Saturdays there. And these are some of the things that you uh, provide there at your shop. J. Ma B. is what it's, uh, that's the name, but I like that name, J. Ma B. on Noble Street. Yes. These are some of the things that you provide. And so, and at this time, when you say, look, you know what, if my sister-in-law can sew, and, and I, so can I. So at this time, you're still working, though. You're still I'm working still your working. job, and you're just, just kind of casually picking up on this thing mm -hmm. and, 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 and learning to sew. Mm -hmm. And so, um, like I said, on Saturdays, I would go to Birmingham and work out of a mm -hmm. boutique mm -hmm. with my girlfriend. And she was like, come in on Saturdays. And I could make skirts pretty fast, about an hour, hour, 15 minutes top, I could make you a skirt. So we wow. would have people to come in, and they would get their get they measurements, get their skirt right on the spot. Wow. Um, and so after that, she was always telling me, you need to open up a boutique. You need to open up a boutique. And I was like, yeah, but you know, I still work. And she was like, but I'm telling you, you got a gift. So it's like. To pick it up that fast. Pick it, yeah. yeah and so it, it was just something there that I never knew was there, but it was there. But that was there. All right, Rebecca, your story, another amazing story, because it's, you know, you're, I, I would, and I'm going to say this, Bath and Body Works, look out, this is your competition right here. Who wakes up one morning and says, you know what, I'm just going to uh, start making soap, but that's not exactly what happened for you, was it? No. But you are making soaps, beautiful soaps. I do. Tell me about your story. How did you find yourself? Well, um, I was diagnosed with thyroid disease about 10 years ago, and um over the years, the doctors weren't able to really kind of get my levels under under control, and so, mm -hmm. um, in order to kind of help myself, I started researching. Okay. You know, what can I do to make myself feel better? Because it doesn't matter what their labs say, I don't feel right. right. And they were telling me, "They're you're fine." No, I'm not fine. So I started researching, and it started with food, and then it went to um, everything else. Yes. Um, there's so many chemicals in our foods oh. and in our um, everyday things that we put on our bodies. Yes. And so I, I'm very old fashioned. I learned how to can from my grandmother. I learned how to do basic tasks that women, you know, way back when did for themselves. And I just kind of started learning, reading, researching. Mm -hmm. And about five years ago, I started making my own. And it was only for me. It was only for my family. Started making your own soaps. Started making, I fr tried my first batch. It was ugly as all get out, but it smelled mm -hmm. like food. And my husband was like, why would you make fudge? <laughs> He's probably coming to, hey, this sure does look good, honey. Let me get some of this fudge here. It, it, it looked like candy as far as he was concerned because of right. the scent I used. Mm -hmm. And um, it just happens that um, I hadn't intended to make it a business. We took a bunch of soaps with us to a wedding in Gatlinburg with a bunch of our friends and I gave the soap away. Well, they took that soap home, used it, and then they posted it on Facebook. Wow. I used this soap, this is the best soap I've ever used and it oh has turned God. into a business since then. And since we moved here to Anniston, I also, um, I gave soaps away to people just for their hospitality when we were here looking for a home. Yes. Um, and they posted stuff on their Facebook pages. And it has literally grown from me selling stuff at Christmas time and making back what I, just to make my hobby, yes, yes. pay for my hobby, 
it has grown to the point, point where I now am located in a couple of locations here in the state. Right. You want to tell us that before we go to break. Give, give me the, the, those locations before we go to break. Right I quick. am at Salon Alon in Jacksonville. Okay. Um, I'm also at the Ladiga Trading Post in Piedmont. Okay. Um, and I just rented a booth in um, Aniston at a little place called Collectic Treasures. And I'm actually in talks with a lady um, in a store up in um, Fort Payne. Yes. As well. Good deal. Good deal. So kudos to you both. We are getting ready to go to break. We are, I am so proud of you guys for what you're doing. We're getting ready to go to break. Know what though? We've got two other local women who are going to be coming on set to tell us all about their business. You know why? Because if it's local, it matters. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, welcome on back to Local Matters, where living local never felt so good. I'm Dottie Rimsey, and if you're just joining us, this show is all about women, women in our community who are working for our community and for the greater good. Now, just before, uh, just a few moments ago, I had two women on, two local women, and now I'm back with two more women from the community who are working in the insurance industry, and they have decided that they were going to uh, walk down entrepreneurial lane, uh, which we know can be tough, it can be dark and a little bit scary, but they have decided to do it anyway. So welcome aboard, guys, hey. to, uh, to Local Matters. Welcome. Hi. Didn't have to come too far. You guys no. are right here in Calhoun County. Mm -hmm. uh, Krista Morphis and Ms. Tamika Smith, both in the uh, insurance industry. And, and, uh, and, and here's the thing, this is a pretty much, especially in our parts, it's pretty much a, a male dominant industry. And so I got to ask, when you are coming uh, out and, and let's say you're going and you're going to talk with a man who has maybe has had his own business for 25, 30 years and here you come walking in trying to talk to him. Tell me a little bit about what you usually uh, run into, Krista, when, you, when that happens. Well, whenever you're talking to a man that has owned his business for 25 years he knows business right. you know yeah he wants to talk to someone that knows insurance and I come in and I'm short so automatically I look like a 10 year old right. and <laughs> he's thinking oh she wants me to buy Girl Scout cookies no I want your insurance yes, right. and so I've got to prove to him that I know what I'm talking about I know what coverages you need I want to look at the gaps in your policy I want to help you in turn you're gonna help me so I want to be that advisor for you and so there's a lot of proving that to an older person mm -hmm. that has their own business and knows everything about it. Right. When you are talking with women, is there a difference that when you are talking with women or when you are going into people's homes and you're talking with the family, is there a difference there? So, um, well, most of the time, if you're working on homeowners or auto insurance, um, it's, there's not that big of a difference. What really I think is a big deal for me being a woman mm -hmm. is say there's a widow Okay. and she's never ever handled her homeowner's insurance or her yes. auto she has yeah. no idea right. now this doesn't happen all the time but i have had the comments where you know she's talked to this man and yeah. he told her this is the coverage you need and that that's it yeah i want to sit down with her and educate her and yes. then I be on it. that same page because i'm a woman and i understand you know i'm like Tell me why I need this mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I've got to I've got to mm -hmm. make a decision. It might change five times, but I've got to make a decision. Right. And so helping educate that person is a big deal, and it, it helps build that relationship. And so you are with Model. Your business is Model City Insurance. Insurance. Mm -hmm. Where are you located? Krista? We're downtown Aniston okay. on the corner of Eighth and Layton, mm -hmm. um, diagonally across from the Tyler Center. So right there in all of the medical um, hoopla. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> So what are, your, what are your products actually? What are you, if you will, specializing, if you will? We um, do homeowners and mm -hmm. auto insurance. We have bundle packages. We're really focusing on commercial policies, so small business owners, uh, mm -hmm. lawyers' offices, and medical complexes, things like that. Um, retail, we really want to del delve into retail and make sure we got um, those, like, those people covered. Right. And we've got a lot of great companies that that's their niche and that's what they want. Yeah. Now, Tamika, welcome yes. aboard to Local Matters. Yes. You are also 
in insurance as well. Tell me a little bit about your business. Your Is it ARIA? Yes, Accredited Resource Insurance Agency, ARIA is what we go by. Mm -hmm. um, we mostly specialize, I guess you would say, in personal lines and commercial lines. Um, so more so I dip and dab now into uh, Medicare supplement. Yes. Um, so Medicare supplement, dental vision, and then also we have auto home and commercial lines and life insurance. So got a lot going on there. Yeah, a lot going on. So where are you originally from, Tamika? You... I'm originally from Gadsden. From Gadsden. Um, I've been here in, in Calhoun County for 10 years, though. Okay, for 10 years. And Krista, we, you're homegrown, right? Yes, yeah, so home I was born and bred. Homegrown. And... Gadsden, coming on down to Anderson. What made you decide to come on down to Calhoun County, right out of Etowah County? Well, initially it was a, my relationship at the time and mm -hmm. also a job. I, I was working with State Farm and so that's what originally brought me to the area, working with State Farm. So. Right. And so here's the thing, and, and I'm, glad you, you, I'm glad you said that because you mentioned a job. You were with State Farm. You guys have been doing this a, a long time. Even though you look young and you are still young, but it's not like you just started yesterday. Right. You've been in the business how long, Chris? Twelve years. Twelve years in, in insurance. In Fourteen years. Okay, so 14 years. That's that's a long time. Yeah, it is. So, so you guys are really out there. You know your stuff. Here's another thing. So what 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 really inspired you and motivated you to say, you know what, I got a job. Yeah, I'm doing a job. But I, I, I kind of want to go out on my own. What inspired you, Krista, to say, I'm just, I want to go out on my own? Yeah. Well, I love insurance. That's weird because everybody hates insurance, but I love it. And I love yeah. what it provides for people. I've been doing insurance actually since I was in high school. And mm -hmm. I knew then, I was like, I need my own business. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been fortunate to work with some really amazing people that have been mentors for me in this community. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I knew I want to have my own agency. Mm -hmm. I want to run it and educate people and do mm -hmm. things my way and, you know, just have something different. I okay. wanted to offer mm -hmm. something different. Okay. So Model City Insurance is about making customers important. Oh. And not that anyone else doesn't, but that's that's our ground. That's our roots. That's and so you're... that's what we want to do. All right. When we come back, I'm gonna we're gonna pick back up with the question for you, Tamika. Okay. I wanna know what inspired you and what motivated you as well. But we've gotta go to break. So when we come back, we're gonna hear more uh, of what inspired Tamika. And then we're gonna bring on the other ladies. So we'll all be we'll be back here on the set, one happy family. We'll be right back with more local matters. Hey everybody, welcome back to Local Matters for Living Local Never Felt So Good. I'm Dottie Rimsey and it never felt so good to have you here with us. If you've just joined us, we this has been a great show because it's all about women. In fact, I've got my whole gang here with me, all four of them up. We're back together, one big happy family. And before we went to break, we were talking about, I, I asked Krista what really inspired and motivated her. We had to go to break. Tamika, I want to know, what has inspired you? You've been in the business. For those who have just joined us, she's in the insurance industry, and you've yeah. been in the business, what, 12 years? 14. Yes. 14 years. Yes. What has really inspired you to, to, to continue in, in insurance? To continue in insurance, I originally started at an independent. So once I became a captive agent at AAA, I was able to see the difference in being the agent or working for the agent. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I was able to write a lot of policies and make a lot of money, but in that case, I was doing it for corporate. That's right. You know, I was an employee. So for me, I saw my potential there, and yes. I said, you know, I need to go out on my own because I started at an independent, and I, I saw what you can do, and I wanted to be able to offer a lot of products, a multitude of variety to mm -hmm. people, not just be set with um, just a stump with what they have to offer at that, just that employer. Yes. So I was excited to definitely go out on my own. So. Where are you located on Noble Street? I'm in the Stewart building, in so Stewart building. Um, okay. right in the middle of Noble, uh, the classic number two building. If okay. you come in there, um, I'm in there. Okay. All right. Good deal. Now, Candy, you you know, we've been talking about women, too, starting up businesses. That's what the, the whole premise of the show is, is about. More and more women now are in the game starting their businesses. And we've been talking about what does it take? One of the things we know for sure that mentorship is very important uh, in order to get us off that couch or move out of that job. And a lot of times, most of the women have shared with me that they 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 would have probably they would probably still be in their job had they not been 
forced to get out, either been fired or something happened that made them say, I need to, I need to, I need to go on and follow my dream. Candy, you mentioned to me too that you had a great mentor in your life that really inspired you. Tell me a little bit about that mentor. She's in Birmingham. Yes, my mentor, she's in Birmingham, um, Elaine's Boutique. Her okay. name is Joyce Woods Crenshaw. Um, she was a very great inspiration to me, where she just took me up under her wings, let me come into her boutique, um, sew, sell skirts, and it was to the point she said, I don't want anything. I just want you to come in. Um, I want you to work. And you work hard, and I want you, you know, you'll make it. And I was like, okay, you know, you don't have that oh many my. people yeah, that you let don't. you come in no, you and work not. in their business and don't ask you for anything. Yeah, you do not. So she's a very great inspiration for me, and I give out all my shots out to her. Oh, all right, good deal. And then Miss Rebecca right back there, what really, who really kind of motivated you when you, again, it's usually something that forces us to say, I'm going to, uh, follow my dream. How did you find you? I know you talked to us about how you found yourself making soap, but who has been your greatest uh, person that has inspired you most? Probably my grandmother. My your, grandmother mm -hmm. is the one who taught me most of what I know to mm -hmm. do. And mm -hmm. of course, she's one of the most important people in the world to me. Mm -hmm. And I lived with her a lot. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's probably the one that, that I can give all the credit to. Mm -hmm in regards to what I know and what I'm doing. Okay. All right. Well, good deal. You know, in doing some research the other night, because whenever I'm coming on the show, I have to make sure I, you know, I do a little research. And I, and, and so that's why this, I wanted to do this show because more and more women are starting their own businesses. It's happening right here in Calhoun County. Where, and these, these are just a few women who have started their own businesses. But it's tough, too. It, it's not easy because you don't have that, you know, that comfort of knowing you're going to get a paycheck every week. You don't, you know, you, you don't have um, the other benefits that come along with having a, a full-time job so it's tough and I know that it's, it's easy for for women now because women are coming together and encouraging one another more but I, I would say one of the things that is probably still tough out here is really trying how do you find capital you know how do you find more funding can you, anybody chime in and say some of the things that you would like to see yourself doing in order to make that happen um, to find more funding for your business? Networking, um, networking for sure. Uh, meeting new people always brings, you know, more business towards you and mm -hmm. also you can also help them with their business. So mm -hmm. a, a lot of that, um, I think that's where the strength is. People mm -hmm. uh, knowing what you do, mm -hmm. um, knowing what you need, what your clientele is and mm -hmm. what your target market so that they can assist you with that. So yes, definitely other people investing in you. Definitely. Key. Right, and one thing I wanted to bring up too is getting involved in your community. Yes. Just beating the streets, letting people know that your interests are their interest and you care just as much about what they're doing. And then they see that. They see, oh, hey, you know, Candy's been here every single week. She's helping us with our soup kitchen or, you know, anything like that. You know, the, yes. Let's reach out to her. I want to help her because she's been helping us. That's and right. so that's something that I think is so important. It's being involved. Involved, and that that's a key that to making key. it happen to happen helping your business yes yeah, scale up for sure mm -hmm. and with me and my business what I've been doing is just give back yes you can you have to give back to the community so I mm -hmm. do a lot of drawings giveaways um, just things you know you go on and you say I want it and I, if I pull your name and you get it um, you give away give back give, give back, back to the community yes. and the thing about it is with my business is my mentor is very good with giving me things for is this person is selling this on sale so you might need to connect with these people okay. so and everybody don't do that they don't want to mm -hmm. give you their connections right but that's the only way I've made it with her giving me the connections mm -hmm. the who to go to people all right so yeah just giving back to the community all right well, there we are. We've got to get out. We've run out of time. It is so great to have you here with us on Local Matters. So hopefully you were able to jot down and write down names and numbers of these women. They would sure love to see you. Tamika Smith, Krista Morphis, Candy Bothwell, and Miss Rebecca Stubblefield. It is great to have you guys here with us, and we'll see you back with more Local Matters next week. Good night, everybody.